All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a little cloudy San Diego today. And today I am joined by Steve Haru, who is down in Las Vegas or across in Las Vegas, actually across and up across, in Las Vegas. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, up and across. Yeah, it shows my showing my uh, fantastic geography. Yeah. So, and uh, Steve is Victory Selling. That's the company and the philosophy. He's built himself an extremely successful sales career spanning 22 years. So, Steve, let's get straight into it. Tell me about Victory Selling. Sure thing, John. So, I think um, we always want to first start off with the, the, the way we need to sell today um, mm -hmm. and the way I've always sold, which is with honesty, integrity, and humility. And those are really the three pillars of of what we teach at Victory Selling. And, you know, being a, a coach, a trainer, a speaker, you know, we have uh, online courses, we've got uh, private, you know, coaching we do for, for clients all over the country and, and the world. I think the most important thing we could discuss is what's inside people's sales DNA. Mm -hmm. And so unlike what other trainers and training systems and all those kind of things do, we kind of believe that we need to know what the heck is wrong before we fix it. So we, we use this proprietary tool called the sales DNA test to, to help figure out what's holding salespeople and sales teams back. And then we craft training to teach and fix and alter and improve those specific areas that salespeople don't even know they're weak at. So that's why we're a little bit different than, than most of what's out there. So, um, so when you say, um, you know, the uh, things that they're maybe not conscious that they're, they're, they're weak at, so how do you help them start to really see that those are the areas that, that need attention? Because, um, you know, sometimes self-awareness is a great thing, but oh, sometimes yeah. people, people lack it and maybe think, no, oh, I don't think, I think I'm pretty good at that. Yeah, when we, um, when we conduct these sales DNA tests, which is basically like an assessment tool. So if you've ever done like a disc, Myers-Briggs, sure. you know, there's 10,000 of them. But there wasn't one I've ever seen that was specific to sales people. And so when I found this and I started using these, it's been around for, for 30 years, by the way. I didn't create it. I just right. use it. Um, it's, it's an eye-opening experience. So let's put it that way. Because when, when I first took it last year, um, I, my success in sales, I, I was number one in the country with Cutco Knives, which many of you guys in sales know what Cutco Knives are. So in college, I was the number one college student in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, I spent six years running sales teams with Cutco, and then I went to Aflac, uh, the company with the duck on TV, mm -hmm. and was 13 years with Aflac and, and made it to number one out of 60,000 agents. So I took this DNA test in sales thinking, oh, I'm pretty decent at sales. You know, I'm, I'm pretty good at this thing. And then when I saw the results, um, I wanted to jump off a building. I'm like, you're just not that good. And I, I have worked over the years at minimizing my ego because ego is a very detrimental feeling or, or sure. characteristic in a salesperson. And so I had to be open to looking at my results going, man, you really need to work on this, that, this, and that. And to, to answer your question more eloquently, there's a couple of, of competencies we measure that you've never even thought of as a salesperson. And one of them is called the need to be liked. Wow. And, and most salespeople, 90 plus percent, have a need to be liked to some degree. And if you do have that, it adversely affects you in sales because if you have it, you don't ask the right questions to your prospects when you should. You don't push back, right, when somebody says something that doesn't make a lot of sense. You don't um, say the right thing or make the right statement at the right time. And so we measure that. And once we see that, my training, my curriculum, I built lessons around, for example, this particular person has a need to be liked, that's the lesson they need to watch first in the curriculum. Uh, this particular person is uncomfortable discussing money. Uh, th that's another uh, factor sure. that we see a lot in salespeople. And so once we identify it and we find out the reasons why, then we can address it. And 
really been uh, eye-opening for a lot of salespeople realizing that those are the things that are preventing them from selling, not the traditional, you know, we've all heard it, right? The, sure. Oh, you got to close and it's all about yeah. closing. And it's just not, it's about yeah. that. So, so it's really interesting just unpacking that for a moment on, on the, the need to be liked piece, because I, th I think this is fascinating because if you think about it, um, the the consequences of that need to be liked, as you said. So you won't ask the difficult questions. Right. You may, when somebody doesn't, I mean, when somebody doesn't react to you in a way that you feel is positive or they're defensive or they're a little closed off, you're going to maybe appropriate that and start to think it's oh, something yeah. to do it. And then maybe act accordingly, which may not be the best way of, of, Correct. of reacting. Yeah, you t you take offense to something, or you you then you maybe try to overdo it on the rapport mm -hmm. side, or it, it, when it comes to um, objections, right, and put offs and excuses. Um, there's a, a another metric similar to need to be liked, um, which is called sales posturing, and inside of that we measure sales empathy, and so there are good sales empathy and bad sales empathy. Good sales empathy is somebody that says, like, let's say you said, Steve, you know what, man, I, I'd love to have you come in and, and train my team, but my daughter was just born premature. My wife's in the hospital right. and she's in ICU and I, I'm, dude, I'm just, I'm not in the right frame of mind. That is good empathy on my part to say, you know what, John, listen, be with your family, I, I totally understand. Let's just talk in another month or so. Mm -hmm. I wish you all the best with your family. That's good sales empathy. Bad sales empathy is when you would say, you know what, Steve, we're we're just gonna we're just gonna wait. You know, the, the pandemic is is happening, and mm -hmm. uh, after you told me sales are down eighty percent, right? And you might lose the business. Bad sales empathy would be me going. Okay, John, no problem. Uh, why don't we talk in 2024? I yeah. don't want to bother you. That's bad sales empathy. So we measure the degree to which salespeople have good and bad. And so having good sales empathy is a very good thing. It means you're not pushing your conscientious or understanding. Having bad sales empathy is active. You probably have the need to be liked. And you're going to lose a ton of deals you probably could have gotten if you just stuck in there and asked the right questions. Yeah, yeah. So and it's interesting. Little and it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because yeah, it's in in the example you just used with the bad sales empathy, you're basically what you're really communicating is like, all right, I'm just gonna cross you off my list now. Yeah. Um don't really care what you you just told me enough to let me know that I'm not getting the business this month. So I'm off. So thanks very much. Right. Whatever. Deal with your issues and I'm out of here. As opposed to yeah. actually showing some level because if you show that a decent level of empathy that person will remember that and may come back to you oh all the time i i literally the call before this i just had with a client we're doing their sales team evaluation now right so we're doing all their uh, sales dna tests for their people sales right. manager dna tests for the managers that was they called me i'll leave uh, they're in san diego by the way uh <laughs> almost two years after our last conversation. So they just reached out to me about a month ago and were like, hey, we're seeing all this sales TNA. What is this stuff you're doing? Because I didn't have that two years ago. Right. But I had never swore them off. I had never blew them off. It was just stay in touch and when the time is right. And mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a big thing we're teaching you guys, uh, people listening to this now is, is being uh, conscientious being patient and being able to, to fill up 2021 um you I, I don't know john if you know what vistage is but um mm -hmm. yeah, you've heard of that before right yeah, yeah. so sure. so i just got approved as a vistage speaker uh, back right. in may and of course we can't do live events <laughs> we, we yeah, can't yeah, do yeah. them so i'm reaching out to all these vistage chairs all over the country to set up 2021 and many of them are like, wow, you know what? I really appreciate you, you know, you, you understanding, like, we've got a lot of stuff booked already. We know, and I'm like, hey, I understand, man. You know, I just want to send you some background about me and my talk, and maybe we can connect, you know, in early 2021. And it's, it's been great. I just booked two, two talks in January in, in Newport Beach. I booked one in Alaska. So wow. 
Patience is a virtue, y'all, and it will always benefit you in sales to be more patient than it will to be more pushy. And I think um, what, you, um, what you're talking about there as well, and I don't know if this shows up in your test uh, as well, is the idea of, um, you know, taking a moment to reflect before reacting, right? Because let's face it, I mean, uh, oh, yeah. when, when you get, when you get a, a pushback or something like that, your natural reaction is, oh, you know, and maybe just be short or curt or whatever and just move on. But the fact... Yes, sir that you're a little bit more thoughtful about it comes back and it's and it's literally only like an investment of maybe another few seconds or minutes in how you react oh yeah yeah there's a metric one of the other metrics we measure is is the ability to handle rejection mm -hmm. so that's a metric we look at but inside of that when we talk about well how do we handle objections and we all get them in sales we all know we've been taught all this yeah erroneous old school stuff but what most salespeople do when they hear an objection or they get a put off, right? It's like, well, let me, let me combat that. Let me answer that. Let me give you my big long list of why you're supposed to buy. And in reality, what you said is the correct way to handle an objection or pushback is you just pause, just one or two seconds. Okay, John, totally understand where you're coming from. Let me make sure I, I'm hearing you correctly. So we pause, we use a clarifier. And then we just say, okay, so you, you see value in, in what we do as a training organization. You like the idea of doing sales DNA tests for your people, but just right now with everything happening, your budgets are on freeze. It's probably better if we talk in, in November, December. Does, does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so they'll either give you one or two answers. Yes, you got it, which means, hey, this guy's listening. He's not just trying to sell me. Or yeah. two, they give you the real objection, and now we know, okay, it wasn't, it's not the right time. It's really, man, I'm in a weird communication stage with my CFO. We butt heads all the time. If I come to her with another bill right now, it's not going to be good. And he just told you that. So mm -hmm. now we know, okay, John, why don't we do this? Let me send you some info about how it all works. And let's talk in another couple of weeks, see if things calm down and, and go from there. So the pause is in and of itself a huge factor in, in you guys handling objections better because it shows them you're listening, you're comprehending, you understand, and you're answering based on what they told you, not just some robotic instant answer to try yeah. to make the sale and and as you just said there it gives you an opportunity because in in that instance you could say well let me give you a few a few ideas about things that maybe would be persuasive for your cfo and then you arm them to have the conversation uh, a more informed oh, yeah. conversation with the cfo so it, it opens a lot of doors for you that that small pause right yeah the, the more they talk, y'all, the better it is for us, right? Mm -hmm. We teach this incessantly, you know, about the two ears, one mouth thing. Um, the more they talk, the better, right? The more you yeah. talk, it's worse. And mm -hmm. we're in this, this, this realm now of really needing to sell more consultatively and really needing to ask better questions, more questions, tougher questions right than we did before and so if you think about it to give you an example in a context you know we teach sales so let's say a company's sales are down and yeah. it's the pandemic well they're not magically gonna get better by accident we we have to be better at selling now than we did six months ago when the economy's booming and everything is great anybody can take orders it's easy mm -hmm. to sell when yeah. the money's flowing but when it's not, we got to be invested more in our sales skills. So, so John, whether or not we work together, I want to share something with you. You've got to have an improvement in your salespeople's ability to sell now more than six months ago. And even though money's tight and there's less to spend on training, now's the time we need to invest more. So ha having direct conversations with people and asking the right questions and saying, John, are we going to have this conversation three months from now when sales are down 80%? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're down 60 now. 
Yeah. Are, are we going to have that conversation? So it's being assertive, not aggressive. Yeah. It's a no, very uh, delicate uh, balance. Absolutely. And you just reminded me actually of, of something I remember having a, when I was um, running a different organization that was a sales training organization actually um, in, in Singapore. And it was just, uh, it was soon after the financial crisis. And you know, before the financial crisis, yeah. uh, budgets were big, like money, yeah. yeah, money was everywhere. And talking to this head of a large sales organization, and he said to me, uh, you know, our, our sales team were so good, and now they're, and now, you know, they just, things aren't going well and all of that. And I said, and I said, well, can, can I just stop you there for a second? And I said, how do you know they were good? And he said, well, well, you know, they were selling loads. And I said, yeah, but everybody was selling loads. I said, right. you know, there was every budgets were big. And, and I said, how do you know they were actually very good at selling? They were good because yeah, it, it was easy to get business. I said, the ones who were doing, who were still doing okay or doing well now, I said, they're the good salespeople. The other yeah. people, maybe they actually weren't that good to begin with. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. And I, the, I heard this uh, Buffett quote not too long ago, but it was so appropriate to this situation. And I'm mm -hmm. sorry if I botch it, but it's, it's something like when the tide goes out, you see who's been yeah. swimming naked, right? Yeah, exactly. You, 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 this, this pandemic is exposing all these companies who don't have the right salespeople. They don't have the right sales leaders. They don't even have a sales process. Hell, I mean, about half of companies, they don't even have a sales process. Mm -hmm. So you ask them to write down their sales process, like, I don't know what you mean. So, you know, I got five yeah. salespeople doing five different things five different value props, like now is when everybody's getting exposed. And so it's yeah. so much more important now to dial that in. Yeah, it's really interesting though you bring up the sales process issue because I'm with my other hat on for a moment on, on, on pipeline or CRM. I mean, that is when we talk to people sometimes, that is the most amazing part when somebody like is saying like, oh, I think we need to implement a CRM. And then you go, okay, let's talk about your sales process. Yeah, you don't even have a sales process. Yeah, yeah, so right? it's like, what exactly are you going to automate here? I mean, the first thing you really need to do is get your sales process in order. But I do agree with you. And I think the other thing that maybe I just want to touch on briefly is yeah. um, the work you're doing now, obviously there's a lot of people who are selling virtually for almost exclusively oh, yeah. now and for the first time. And it's interesting some people who are great face-to-face -face sense people are really struggling on zoom they're even struggling Lots. switching on switching on their camera they get some the camera shot guys will storm into a room as hey i'm here to sell yeah. to you don't even want to turn their camera on 100 percent. i just this is weird we're having this conversation but i i just wrote a course um that's called be memorable the key right. to virtual sales presentations in today's economic climate and I'm, I'm now, you know, it's part of what we do, but, but teaching people how to be effective in a Zoom sales presentation, it's way different, right? When you're belly to belly, you know, I get a lot of, you know, veteran salespeople that are like, oh, I just prefer it in person. Well, I'd like to be 6'10 and be in the NBA, but that's <laughs> not reality. You got you either adapt or you die, you know, as, as mm -hmm. Darwin taught us. So you either get good at doing sales presentations virtually or you just die out. And so yeah. you got to be good at that stuff. We got to learn how to do it, whether we like it or not. That is the new norm. And that and that brings me back to that to the point you were talking about earlier. The point about listening, uh, well, because I, I find on a lot of uh, Zoom calls and especially sales calls is that the salesperson gets very nervous about any kind of uh, silence, any pause in the conversation. So you can ask a question, and then there's a pause in the conversation while the other person is actually thinking about the answer. And the salesperson feels the need to fill the silence, ruining the reflection yeah. point, right? Yeah, we, we, we've all, some of us been taught that, right? Um, you know, he who speaks first, you know, loses, right? Or mm -hmm. just, I, I've, I've heard of situations of salespeople literally sitting there silent and their prospects sitting there silent for five minutes. I've, I've mm -hmm. heard it happen. I probably wouldn't go that long. Yeah. But, but, but pausing is a very powerful piece uh, in the sales process for, for 
a couple of ways. Obviously, one is letting that person reflect on what you said. And two is letting them know that you're thinking about what they said before mm-hmm. you just start yapping and, and go on this minute long soliloquy of why they should buy from you. Yeah. Um, silence is a, a very important. And and even to say to somebody is say, oh, um, okay, uh, let's Steve, uh, just, just give me a moment to think about what you just said, because that's really interesting. That's a huge compliment to you. And also it's just, I've just validated and, and clarified the fact that I'm listening to you and that I heard what you said, because I'm actually taking the time out rather than uh, lining up my comeback. Oh yeah, that you know you did a good job when they say that. Um, and that's kind of takes me on a different kind of thought process. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I put a post up on LinkedIn, uh, maybe last year or something, and it was about ABC and it was always be closing crap. And sure. how, like we got to get rid of this. It's not the nineties anymore. And mm-hmm. I had thing went viral, right? So who knows how many views, but I got a lot of private messages and people were like, Hey Steve, can you talk to my husband or Hey Steve, can you talk to my boss or whatever? And somebody wrote a, a, a good one was, What's the one skill, if you could teach somebody something in sales, what is the one skill you would teach them? And it's a hard answer, but the the roundabout answer is when your prospects ask you, hey, John, how do we move forward? Mm. What do we have to do? How do I sign up? What's the next step? When your prospects are asking you how they can buy, that's when you know you're doing a great job in your sales mm-hmm. presentation. When you are the one always asking these stupid closing questions of, what can I do to put you in this copier today, John? Or, you know, these dumb things, right? Well, would anything prevent us from moving forward today? Yeah, you, <laughs> right? <laughs> when, when, when we ask those dumb kind of questions, we're not doing a great job in sales. People are asking us, Hey man, this sounds good. How do I get this DNA test? Now you know you're doing a good job. So that's a good test, guys. If you're listening. Um, and by the by the way, let, let me let me just uh, let me just um, comment on that because here's an interesting phenomenon that I've come across a number of times when people have been selling to me because I'm a pretty when it comes to a sales process if I'm on the buyer side I'm a pretty net kind of person right you know I don't really want the fill. I want to get through this quickly yeah, I want to figure out right. get to yeah. the point right and there are times in the sales process where I've said okay so just you know give me the, give me the commercials here like what's it what, what do I have to do blah 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 well you know what's the payment terms what's the price and I get reluctance and they say well I want to first let me and I'm like hang on a second I'm I'm literally asking you how do I pay for this right because clearly I'm interested and you're stalling because you think oh it's way too early for me to be talking money with you that's another thing that just happened on LinkedIn among the many things we should not be doing but one guy reached out and he's like hey man if I want to do coaching with you and do this DNA to you know want to do this right you know just tell me how much it is is it right and I'm like, 997. Yeah. I, just wrote, I just wrote that back. Yeah. And he writes back. He goes, Steve, you are literally the only person I've ever asked that question to that actually answered it. <laughs> but, uh, I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, man. They always try to reset or do this or do that. Yeah. Like we, 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 uh, we have this new um, victory selling system that I built. Right. It's kind of a, you know, you heard of Sandler, all these things. Right? Yeah, I sure. wanted to build one for 2020. So our system's coming out in three weeks and I want to make it affordable for people. Right. So it's three ninety seven. It's not, we're not talking about mm-hmm. it though. So I was telling this to one of my other groups today and they were like, Steve, you know, how much is it going to be? And somebody else was like trying to sell it for me. Right. Somebody else chimed in like, wait till you see what Steve's working on. Mm-hmm. Wait till you see this daily victory gave you. And I had to stop them in the chat. I'm like Mike. It's three ninety seven. Right? You just, yeah. Just be honest with people, guys. If this is yeah. what, like, it's it's such a simple thing that will separate you from every other salesperson on the planet. And that to kind of go back to our three pillars: honesty, integrity, humility. That's it. Yeah. It's all I try to do. It's all I try to teach. It's not hard. Um, and I don't know who who I don't know if it's Jim Rohn that taught me this or who taught me this, but maybe you would know, but 
if you always tell the truth, you never have to remember what you said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it's. A, I don't know who said that, but it. I don't know who, but it's a. It's a. It's absolutely the the truth. I sometimes think when you see people who, who you know, who tell lies, and if, you know, you see them in the news or whatever, and you think, my God, it must be exhausting to try and remember all of the lies and all the variations and all of that. Yeah, you see all these other the sales gurus, right? When they go, oh, it's it's nine thousand dollars, but today it's ninety nine. Yeah. Know, this garbage right like what you, just don't do that it and and if you guys are selling something expensive right so this goes back to the uncomfortable with money and mm-hmm. the need to be liked um when i when i sold cutco knives right and some of you guys know what they are they're really great yeah. kitchen knives but they're very expensive mm-hmm. when we are taught in sales or selling something expensive we're taught never to say the price and yeah I would tell people, because I had never sold anything in my life when I was 18, I would tell people, I'd say, listen, John, these knives are worth more than my life, okay? Like, <laughs> one knife's worth more than what I have in my bank account. But they're amazing, and you never have to buy them again. And let me show you what it's like to use them, because I would bring food with me to sure. my demos. But I told them up front, it's expensive. Even my clients now, when I work with a company, I'm like, John, I'm expensive. It's, it's not cheap. Yeah. So you just up front with people when you dance around things and sugarcoat that it's never going to end up good no, for you guys. No, no. You know? and, I, and, I lo- and I love, and I love it in my own interactions. I love it when I engage with somebody, even if it's like something for, you know, your house or whatever you're getting done when the person comes and says, listen, um, I'm not going to be the cheapest uh, and here's why I'm not going to be the cheapest. And then you go and, and then it almost gives you the, the permission to say, okay, well, I'm just interested in cheap. So off you go, but you don't because you Which go, okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You want that. If somebody wants the, the cheapest, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you want to paint your house, right? Somebody comes over and they're like, I'll paint your house for $30. Like, yeah. I'm good there. Yeah. Or somebody says I'm 3000. I'm not the cheapest, but I'm the best. Yeah, and you're here's way why. more likely to, to use the guy or gal that's 3000 But again, when you say that, you can qualify it. And then they can tell you, you know what, Steve? You're right. You know, we don't need you quite yet. I, I ju- I'm just looking for a really low cost alternative. Like, hey, no problem, right? You're not everybody's cup of tea. They're not your cup of tea. Yeah. And, and you guys as salespeople have to know when to say no. Some of the best yeah. decisions I ever made were clients I didn't let hire me. Um, yeah, and they tried, but it just wasn't the right fit, and it wasn't worth the, the dollars, right? So, that's a when you get to that point, guys, and you can confidently pass on business, it'll always benefit you in the end. Always. Yeah, no, absolutely. And just one last note on that. Uh, as I said, I mean, I run a sales training company. I've been selling a number of years back, and oh, it yeah. amazed me. Amazed me how many companies that we engage with who would say. Um, you know, when we were customizing the material for them, no, no, our, we don't call our, our people, our salespeople, salespeople. We don't want them to. And I'm always, I was like, okay, whatever you want to call them. But in my mind, I'm going, you do know that the people yeah. they're engaging with know that they're salespeople, right? So yeah, by I'm, calling them another name, it doesn't change anything. No, it's if they're, it's this moniker, right? Because, you know, salespeople have this bad, bad name, as sure. you know, because so many bad mm-hmm. ones out there, but I did a talk in front of a bunch of realtors um, last year, and I said, hey, raise your hand if you know you're a salesperson. <laughs> and like, you know, a third of the hands went up. I'm yeah. like, guys, you're you sell salespeople. houses. Yeah. You realize this. You, you're <laughs> not a real estate professional. You're not a dream yeah. builder or whatever other crap you want to put in your business card. We, we have to get back to the point where we are proud of what yeah. we do. But that's why we always go back to honesty, integrity, and humility. Yeah. Be proud of what you do and, and help more people. And by the way, what is the criteria that most people use to select a realtor? How many houses have you sold? I mean, it's like <laughs> you, you would think there'd be a lot of common sense, but sometimes it's not, you know, yeah. as, as we know. As we know. Well, listen, Steve, this has been fantastic. All of Steve's yeah, thanks, information yeah. will be in the in his contributor bio below this video. Before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Sure. Um, just again, quick victoryselling.com. You could check that out, guys. Connect with me on LinkedIn, right? Steve Haru. 
um, H-E-R-O-U-X. I love to meet new people. If you want to learn more about the DNA test, it's salesdnatest.com. And um, again, we, we, as, a, as a, a, a goal, right, as my, my purpose it, really in life is to completely change the way that we look at salespeople and sales training, right? We, we got to get back to um, conscientiousness and empathy and caring and wanting to do what's good for them, you know, not for us. So if you want to be part of that uh, movement, you know, please connect with me uh, on social media or, or Instagram or whatnot. And, uh, you know, we, we need to do better for people, right? It's not all about the money. And so we just got to have that mantra and, and let's start flipping the script and, and having people look at us like we're, we're human. Yeah, no, 100%. And the money will come. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks. Uh, my name is John Golden, Thanks Sales Pop again, Online John. Sales mag Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. Thanks, Steve. Uh, and I'll see you all for another interview soon. Thanks, man. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.